Hey guys, zombies in D&D are overused, boring, and not very scary. And so I thought, what could we do to spice them up? And with heavy influence from Halo Combat Evolved, I have created a set of stat blocks for you that will be very reminiscent of the Flood. Welcome back to the Game Masters Academy. This is the show where we strive to help you make every one of your sessions great. Thank you for joining me. My name is Greg. This week, as I was uh, moving about, I'm coming to you again from uh, Indiana this uh, today on a work break. And as I was moving about down the road, I, I was just thinking about different um, games and or different sets of lore that I really enjoyed and trying to come up with fun ways that I could incorporate them into D&D. And honestly, adding the Flood to D&D is probably the simplest way to do so. Um, there's there's not a lot that's going to be that outlandish um, from uh, basically the Flood's concept or Bungie's concept of the Flood when they originally created Halo to the implementation into uh, Dungeons and Dragons itself. So I went ahead, I created three different stat blocks before we get into all of that, um, I just wanted to let you know, uh, the Game Masters Academy is designed as a way to uh, help Dungeon Masters with combat encounters, uh, potentially help players with either rules or with uh, combat builds, things along those lines. And if you are uh, watching and you enjoy this you know, video or it's something that you find uh, you would like to you know, add to your game and whatnot, uh, I'd recommend uh, giving it a subscription. I'll be releasing videos on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, Thursdays, I'm going to stick to uh, the Combat Corner, which is our basically combat builds or encounter builds uh, for 5th edition. And then on Mondays, we'll get a little bit uh, more creative with what it is that the content will be uh, between stat blocks and character builds, things along those lines. So. Um, feel free to uh, like, subscribe, comment, uh, let me know any different changes that you would have put in or maybe there's something uh, specific about the Flood that I forgot. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I try to respond to everybody that uh, does comment and uh, I'd love to hear any ideas that you uh, potentially have. With that all out of the way, let's get into the stat blocks that we have. Now, for those of you that have never played Combat Evolved, that came out when I was in college, actually came out before I was in college, and there's this, I guess the easiest way of putting it would be, almost think of it like zombies, but there's these little tiny parasites. So those little spreaders are these gross little things, about the size of a cat. And they run across the, the ground and the walls and all sorts of other stuff in a big giant swarm. Uh, they attack humans and or aliens. There's aliens in that game. that doesn't need to be that way in your D&D uh, &D game for it to work. But they attack them. If they kill them, the humanoid rises back up almost instantaneously as a zombie monster thing with creepy tentacle arms and you know runs at you and attempts to attack you and then uh, after a set amount of time they morph into this big giant waddle blobby guy and here is one of the exploder guys overall absolutely disgusting now again i am not trying to act like this is an original idea or anything along those lines uh you can make them look however you want but just giving you an idea of the inspiration that uh, prompted this whole thought. That when he dies, explodes, dealing a ridiculous amount of damage and releasing more of the little tiny parasite dudes into the area that run around and attempt to do the same thing over again. There's a ton of lore that goes into them. There's a grave mind and all sorts of other things. And I'm not trying to get into all of that. Uh, if you want to go crazy with it, go ahead. Um, but the idea here is I, I wanted to create three stat blocks for those three specific monsters. So we've got the, uh, I'm going to call the little guys that run all over the place, the spreader. Um, the guy, when you like animate a dead body is going to be a carrier. And then the big bulby, like explodey guy is an exploder as it sounds. 
So we'll look at the spreader first. Uh, it's going to be a small uh, monstrosity. And I took the... I took a template basically for a swarm of insects and I modified it from that to really kind of give us the flavor that we're looking for. Um, specifically, the thing that's extra or different that it's going to do is spreader kills a humanoid or a creature basically. It doesn't have to be a humanoid. A creature, it can reduce its hit point total by four and then uh, that creature reanimates as a carrier in 1d4 rounds and the idea behind all of that is the swarm mechanics in D&D basically says that as your hit points go down the damage you do decreases as well and so I like the idea of basically it dealing damage to itself to indicate that it's got one less member within that swarm. Uh, once it's animated it's now a carrier um, and so we're going to be looking at um, a guy, obviously these guys all have unusual nature, so they don't require food, drink, sleep, air, anything along those lines. Um, a lot, we're going to be looking at immune to poison, things along that. We are as close to being an undead as we can be without actually being an undead. And a uh, carrier just gets a, a reach tentacle attack that's 10 feet long, 2d6, um, plus its strength modifier. And then uh, it basically, at the beginning of every one of its turns, it rolls a d6, and on a 5 or a 6, it just falls prone and turns into an exploder. Which then brings us to an exploder. Uh, exploders are significantly slower, a lot more hit points, and uh, basically what ends up happening is they don't have an attack, they just waddle their way close to you, and then they choose to blow themselves up dealing uh, significant uh, necrotic damage off of a dex save failure um, in an area so it's AOE damage and it does it would damage the other uh, of these uh, creatures as well and so then the exploder then when it dies it spawns a spreader and so we have this looping life cycle for these guys as they spread around and um, basically multiply exponentially so those are the three monsters. I have all three of their stat blocks set up currently on the Patreon. Uh, again, if you're just watching for the first time, uh, I'll put a link in the description. The uh, Patreon is completely free. It's just an opportunity for me to be able to store um, PDFs and then be able to provide easy access for everybody to have them. For a side quest for this, um, I had two ideas that I liked. Uh, I'll kind of go through them both with you. Uh, but... The first one is very just bland and boring, and it's basically one of the carriers comes into the city, a uh, small rural village or whatever, uh, falls down, turns into an exploder. Now we've got spreaders everywhere, and it is uh, obviously a disaster. Uh, these guys are going to be horrific against a commoner. Uh, just the spreaders themselves do 4d4 damage. So uh, not 40, 4d4 uh, damage. So they're pretty much uh, on a hit going to guaranteed kill somebody, which means you're going to get a guaranteed uh, carrier come up and you can see that this can start to completely destroy a town relatively quickly. Again, that kind of feels like the cheap way out. Alternatively, I like the idea of the party going off on a quest and looking for a specific item that works in your campaign. It uh, doesn't really matter what it is. It's just a specific item. And they find it in an ancient ruin, and there's all these different descriptions on the walls. There's all sorts of different texts for anybody that uh, has some of the more rare languages that would fit in your campaign, whether that's Infernal or Sylvan or whatever. And slowly, you start dropping hints that the area that they're going to is less a place of rest for something and more a prison where they have basically blocked off all of these creatures from existing in the material plane. We have this specific area that they have to go to. They're trying to get a, uh, some MacGuffin for your uh, particular campaign. And in doing this, they inadvertently open the doors 
and release this creature. Now, if we just put one or two of them around, it's not really going to be a challenge. The idea here is I want to include like four or five spreaders, like three or four carriers, and then have maybe one exploder that's just ready to go. And that means that we're going to be looking at this for a higher level party. So you're going to be looking at this for a party that's going to be, I would say, probably around level eight. Uh, you could go higher, but uh, it becomes an issue with uh, the ease of Force Cage and or Wall of Force to be able to contain this. And you really want to get this feeling of they need to stop everything because if they don't, you know, terrible things are going to happen. The ruins that you're in need to have some sort of a humanoid here that... Uh, not one, but multiple. So whether that is a uh, Dwerger clan, because we're underground, maybe this is the abandoned portion of a city that you specifically have set aside in your campaign, and the whole entire area is blocked off, and it's been blocked off forever, and no one really remembers why it's being guarded. It doesn't matter, but we need to have some sort of way that there's creatures that can be there so that way the threat of spread and multiplying uh, is relatively high and we are then able to ensure that there is a sufficient threat that could potentially be posed on the party itself. So they go in, they inadvertently release the flood, the surrounding area is obviously the problem and they have to slowly defeat this and one of the things I like about this is this is less about the strength of the individual and more the strength of the, uh, I guess, the swarm of all of them. And I think that's exactly how it's supposed to feel. And we want to make sure that we do a great job of uh, ensuring that we give descriptions and that we do um, a really good job of making these sound horrific and gruesome. Uh, you know, going into body horror with the caveat of ensuring that, you know, we've had this conversation through session zero, things along those lines. So that allows us to ensure we've given the right description. Um, that correct description should provide us with the correct reaction from the group. Uh, if not the characters, most likely the players will get the right reaction from that. And now it's basically just a race against the spread of this. And, you know, this could be set up as a side quest, but I could also see how in doing this, it releases it and they're unable to get all of the spreaders before they, you know, go out and multiply. And now we have a much larger area that this is specifically affecting. And it's about you know, going out and clean up and, you know, doing all of those types of things to ensure that you are able to remove this and prevent it from just completely destroying cities. So that's, that's the concept for the creature, as well as the side quest or tie into your main campaign that you can do here. Uh, the, the idea here should be that we provide the correct level of um, necessity for them to go fix this before it gets worse. And we have it set up with them at a slightly higher level. Uh, the creatures are like CR1 and 3 and stuff like that, but with how easy they are to spread, we want this to be a slightly higher CR, I'm sorry, a slightly higher party, so that way they can stand the chance of this battle of attrition. Because if you put a bunch of swarms down and then you put a bunch of carriers down and then an exploder you're very quickly getting into like a CR 15 CR 20 type of a combat and potentially maybe they just want to run away and do like a strategic retreat have a bunch of ranged attacks hit it whatever whatever it is that they want to do so that's the character uh, like I said swing through the patreon grab the PDFs uh, incorporate them into your game uh, maybe this is something that's in an ancient ruin. Uh, maybe it's something that has uh, come from a meteor that crashed on uh, the material plane. And instead of having them be monsters, you want them to be aberrations. Whatever you want to do to make it work for your game. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a rest of your, uh, great rest of your week. 
And as always, let's let the dice decide.